Have you ever seen a 3D website that impressed you so much that you wanted to learn how to do this yourself? Then try out React 3 Fiverr by following this course where we will go over the basics which will help you to create your 3D website faster. React 3 Fiverr is based on 3GS so be aware that this video might be a bit hard to follow if you don't have any experience with 3GS yet. We will start by using the code base that we created in a previous video which is linked in the top right corner. When we look at our code, the base of the 3 scene function is a canvas. This will always be the root element of your React 3 Fiverr content. Why is this element needed and what does it do exactly? Let's dive deeper into that. To be able to display anything with 3GS, you need at least three things. First, you will need a scene, which is basically the universe where all 3D objects will be placed in. This will have an X, Y and Z axis for the width, height and depth of the universe. Then we will need a camera to show the scene from a specific point. And last, we need a renderer which is being used to actually render the scene from the camera viewpoint. In this code example, you get to see that our simple canvas.jsx element generates all of those requirements in the background. First, it creates the scene, camera and renderer we mentioned before. Then the renderer gets connected to the HTML canvas which is generated by React 3 Fiber. The mesh that we added manually will be added to the scene and finally the animation loop will be added as well. It's good to notice that in 3GS we would have to develop all of this code ourselves. But as you might have noticed, we also included lights in our own code base. Let's add a property to this light so we can see that it automatically brightens up the cube. So what exactly happens here? For that, let's take a look at some simplified code. In case you add a point light with the arcs property included, it will actually create a 3JS point light in the background with those arcs as constructor parameters. In case we set the intensity, React 3 Fiber will create a default point light and set the intensity to the provided value. Something similar happens when you set the position with an array of values, but here it calls the set method to set the position. So how does React 3 Fiber know to use the set method in this case while well, it uses the single equals assignment operator for the intensity? This is because React 3 Fiber automatically checks if there is a set method available to call. In case you only want to set a single property of for example the position, you can do this by setting the React property using a dash instead of a dot. There are some other relevant properties and automatic checks happening in the background, but those will be handled in another video since this is getting too complex for the basics. Before we continue, I want to note that 83% of the viewers isn't subscribed yet. It would really mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to help this channel grow and to remove the lack of content about React 3 Fiber on YouTube. So let's get back on the picture about rendering the scene. It shows an X, Y and Z axis, which are not visible in our website. So how can we know which direction is X, Y or Z? For that, an easy solution is the axis helper, which React Free Fiber provides by default. Add an argument for the length of the axis and save your file. You will get to see a red X axis and a green Y axis, but there is no blue Z axis yet. This is because the Z axis is pointed exactly towards us. To be able to see this, we will need to move our camera. We can do this by using some sort of controls. In 3JS, there is an Orbit Controls class available, which makes it possible to drag around the center of the scene. This class needs a camera and a DOM element as arguments, which we can retrieve by using the useTree hook. As you see, the Orbit Controls element does not exist by default in React 3 Fiber. Luckily, it provides an extent method which we can use to add the orbit controls to the React intrinsic elements. To separate this code, let's create an r3f-elements.ts file, add the required imports and extend the orbit controls clause. This will fix our problem, but because we are using TypeScript, we will need to add the orbit controls to the intrinsic elements interface inside of the global JSX namespace. As you can see, this will fix the error, which is actually a false positive, because TypeScript catches the declaration we added, but the file hasn't been included in our project yet. Therefore, we need to import it in our main file. Add the controls to the canvas, and you will be able to drag around inside of your scene. This way, you will also get to see the blue Z axis. Now, you might have noticed that I created a separate function for the controls. That's because our code will break if we add the element and the required code to our 3 scene function. As you see here, React 3 Fiber hooks can only be used within the canvas component. 
In our case, this is exactly what we did wrong with the US3 hook. All of this happens because of something called React Context, which cannot be used between multiple renderers. Since React3 Fiber is a separate React renderer, it cannot access the context without being inside the canvas. This caveat is very unfortunate, but let's end with some good news. Luckily, this is the only gacha that you will find on the official React3 Fiber website. Hopefully, this gave you a clear idea of the basics of React3 Fiber. If you think this was too complex or you prefer more 3GS contacts within those tutorials, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have any other requests or questions, I am available to help. If you haven't seen my other videos, here are some suggestions. Thanks for your time and I will see you next time. Ciao!